Good day, and welcome to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. Well, this is a bit of an odd device, that's for sure. Um, I got this from an old friend who uh, unfortunately has sadly passed away this summer in the prime of his life. So a little bit of a, a memory piece for me. He was going to toss it out. But, you know, it was kind of odd and kind of shiny and kind of attracted me. So I rescued it before it got tossed out. Um, sadly, my, li my life is full of shiny, odd things. Um, you might be saying, hey, Mike, that's not a radio. And you're right, it isn't a radio. But what it is, it's probably much more of a transmitter since its design is very similar to an old-fashioned spark gap transmitter, I'd be willing to bet you it transmits <laughs> more than one band, and its bandwidth is probably bigger than the Titanic. Let's take a closer look of how this gizmo works. The shield comes off real easy. And it's a very basic thing. Um, there are two rods of carbon here. In order to start it, you have to strike the light. And behind the light here, there's a knob. And as you can see, one of the rods is moving. And I can touch the other rod and strike an arc. And then I can tune the, uh, the brightness of the arc and the length of the arc by moving this. If I move it too far, of course, the arc will stop. These arc rods are expendable. They will disappear as time goes on with use. And we have resistors and inductors kind of built into this that cause an oscillation to move the frequency of the arc up from 60 hertz. So this is where the spark gap type transmitter comes in. So it's a very simple ordeal. You know, one of these will be hot and one of these will be neutral to a resistive inductive and of course a little bit of capacitive um, spacing between the arc you get the arc started and uh, away it goes we've got some manufacturer information here i'll get you a better photo but that's it there's nothing more nothing special to it all other than you strike the arc and away you go just a bit of a public service announcement about these carbon amp uh, carbon arc lights is uh they emit an awful lot of UV radiation, um, and that can cause a mild burn to your eyes. Well, sometimes it can be quite harsh. Um, it's known in the medical field as what's called flash. It's like if you were arc welding without the proper eye protection and shield, the UV will burn the lens of your eyeballs, and uh, it'll make it uncomfortable for a while for you. I know I had an experience as a youth where I was arc welding, but the uh, the lens in my helmet had a crack in it, and uh, the UV was uh, bleeding through that crack. I didn't know it at the time, uh, but I got a bit of flash, and it was uncomfortable for a day or so. So there's a little bit of caution around looking directly at them. I'll, I, I try to avoid it. Um, History of the carbon arcs, they are kind of sort of one of the earliest forms of electric lighting. And as time moved on, we, we got better with technology. And of course, we developed tungsten carbide filaments and things like that, um, that kind of replaced uh, carbon arc. Um, these were then relegated because of their intense full spectrum lighting they were relegated to movies and cinemas and shooting movies for quite a long period of time. And, uh, you know, and then again, technology marched on and they were kind of moved out. And I don't know if you're an old guy like me, but maybe you remember 
they used to have these gigantic searchlights at grand openings of stores and events that had these massive rotating searchlights on the back of a truck. They were also carbon arc. The thing I find that's interesting or odd about this is the time period where it was made, and I'm going to guess the 30s or 40s, we had better technology for having a desk lamp. This is a desk lamp, so this kind of sort of blows my mind a little bit. I, I can't imagine what this would be intended for. Um, is it made for sun tanning? Is it made for medical use? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but anyways, uh, I'll leave you with a couple of questions. Um, if anybody knows what this desk lamp version of a carbon arc light might have officially been used for, was it for a medical reason? I know uh, nowadays they have ultraviolet lights for treating people with seasonal affective disorder. And I know that uh, some say, hey, you know, the UV light was used for tanning. Um, I don't know if tanning lights were back in the 30s or 40s. But anyways, if you know anything about that, maybe you could post it in the comments below. Also, I was going to ask the general subscribership here is, do you think I should take the time and put this on the restore list and restore it um, back to its original condition? Because it is kind of an interesting piece and I've had it now for a while over a year and I've not done anything with it so maybe you can help me make up my mind um, I'm going to toss up uh, uh, a photo of some manufacturing information the, there's an actual tag on it and uh, we'll see what everybody knows and it will be very interesting if somebody uh, raises their hand says I know what that's for and uh, and comes forward so not something I normally do is share uh, strange things but you know why not um, our electronic community here are a bunch of curious people, and I thought maybe some of you may be interested in uh, having a look at this old lamp. So uh, until the next one, we'll see you then. Well, News Today, brought to you by Continental Radio and Television Corporation, makers of Admiral Radio, America's smart set. By shortwave broadcast, direct from important world capitals, as well as the leading news centers of our own country, CBS correspondents are waiting to bring you a complete report from the world's political and battlefronts. But first, here's John Daly with a summary of headline news as received in New York.